Praise the Lord, everybody. It feels good to be in the house of the Lord today. There's no place I'd rather be in than this place, lifting up the wonderful name of Jesus. Can we do that all over this house? Can we magnify the wonderful name of Jesus? God, we love you. We give you praise. We magnify you, Jesus. You're worthy. Hallelujah. We give you every praise uh, that is due unto you, Jesus. Uh, oh, we magnify your holy name. Uh, God, there is none like you. There is no Savior like you. Uh, hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. Every praise is to our God. Oh, in every, every word of worship. Hear me. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder if we could lift up our hands, every person in this house right now. And just thank God for everything he's ever done in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you've been with me through everything. You're my healer, my deliverer, my strength. Nothing is impossible for you, God. I love you, Jesus. I worship you. Thank you, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You own my every thought. Yes, you call. You call my agency. Oh, you walk with me. Jesus, I trust. I trust. 
Oh, 
come and are thankful that with God nothing is impossible, that he holds our world in his hands. If we can lift up our hands one more time all over this house at Pentecost, that nothing is impossible with you, God. Lord, you hold our world in your hands, Jesus. God, we know, Lord, that with man things are impossible, but with God nothing is impossible, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many know that no matter what happens in life, no matter what you're faced with, that you have a God that is on your side? That when you pass through the waters, he said, I will be with thee. And when thou passest through the river, it shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned. He said, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. We serve a holy God. We serve a God that goes with us. If you have a need in this place, lift up your hand. Want to go to the Lord right now in prayer for every one of these needs that we have, every hand that is lifted. Let's bring these needs before God. Lord, you see every hand that is lifted, every hand that is raised, God. Lord, we bring these needs before you, Jesus. God, no matter what the situation is, God, no matter what the need is, we know that we serve a God that has all power, that has everything in his hands and his control. We know that no matter what we go through, Jesus, you are with us, God. Lord, no matter what sickness, God, may be inflicting our bodies, Lord, God, that you have the power to heal it, God. When we pass through the fire, Lord, you are with us, Jesus. God, when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, God, you are with us, God. We thank you, Jesus. Every need, God, every hand, Lord, that is raised. We're believing for a miracle. We're believing that you would touch these needs, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you believe it, give God a hand clap of praise. You may be seated in this house. So glad to all of our guests and visitors. We're so glad to have you in the house of the Lord. Can we give them a hand clap of appreciation? Thank you for being with us today. I want to prize you of our schedule this week. Tonight, 5.30 prayer, 6 o'clock service. Come expecting a powerful word, a powerful service tonight. Monday, for all the ladies around here, is our Minute to Win It game night. I believe that starts at 6.30. It's going to be a great time around here for our ladies, having fun, fellowshipping together. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock prayer and Bible study. You started a new series this last Wednesday. I'm excited to hear the following Wednesday and everything that uh, um, comes out of that Bible study. It's always a great time. And then Thursday and Friday for all of our young people, all of those that would like to go over, I encourage you to go over to Faith Tabernacle Youth Convention this Thursday and Friday night. Victor Jackson will be preaching. It's going to be a great time for all the young people. If you, I'm telling you, if you can get the time off Thursday, be there. Friday, be there. You will not be disappointed. God is going to meet us there. Amen. And then tonight, I invite you to join us immediately following service. Transform Youth will be um, making some delicious crepes out there. Um, we've got a ton of toppings. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be a great time stuffing our face. Um, you can put as much whipped cream and Nutella and stuff on it that you would like. So <laughs> please join us following service tonight for that. We're doing a little fundraiser for youth conventions. Donations are appreciated and accepted. At this time, I'd like to invite you to give in our tithes and offering and worship in the Lord. Give in person today. You can give electronically. You can see Sister Lindsay Galindo. She'll be over here on my left. You can, if you join us on the live stream, you can text to give at this time. The information is popping up on the screen. Let's come and give unto the Lord today.
world today would you stand and sing this and lift your hands towards heaven uh, as you're singing I want you to pray for some family members some friends that need an answer from heaven today uh, this world needs exactly what we have uh, we've got the answer for this world today hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus pray with faith for him right now believe heaven for to touch your family your friends and our world you lift your hands towards heaven and I want you to call out the needs of family and friends right now that they desperately need God in their world uh, would you call out his name it works I promise you he's still healing he's still delivering uh, I bless you and I praise you and I worship your name Jesus uh, hallelujah 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 uh, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Touch our world and touch our families. Uh, touch our homes in the name of generate. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bring healing to our land in the name of Jesus. Uh, labaka. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God's word still stands when we pray. He hears and he answers. Does someone a witness of that today? Hallelujah. Just this last week, I get a text from Brother John. 
His hip was giving him all kinds of problems. We prayed. He said within one hour, the pain was completely gone. God hears our prayer. Someone give him a clap and a shout of praise in this house today. Hallelujah. I feel Jesus. Oh, and I feel Oh, yes, and I feel Jesus. Oh, he's in, he's in this place. And my soul. Let your prayer 
are trying to figure it out. I want you to reach out if it's okay where your neighbor is and I want you to begin to pray with them this morning. I know there's many needs and I wonder right now if we can be the church and begin to pray for one another in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is in this place. He's surrounding us with his presence. Hallelujah. Can we just pray in the Holy Ghost right now just for a little bit. Oh yes and surround. Surround me, God. Surround me. Oh, oh yes. Surround me. Oh, Lord. Oh, yes. And let your presence fill this day. Oh, that's it. Let's keep praying. Oh,
hands and thank you for his presence in this house. I love you, Jesus. I bless you. Lift your voice in this house, church. There is such a special touch of the Lord ministering right now. We bless you and we praise your name, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There's just a song rolling on my spirit. It's, it's old school. But surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Uh, if you want to stand, you can. If you want to be seated, you can. Uh, but there's nothing, nothing can top the presence of the Lord coming in and ministering to lives right now. Uh, would you thank Him for His presence as we sing today? Surely the presence of the Lord. thankful for your presence it's not just with us on Sunday but it's living inside of us through the power of the Holy Ghost I bless you and I praise your name Jesus hallelujah 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 if God has been good to you this week would you give him glory and honor and praise blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord thank you Lord Jesus You've been standing for a while. I'll let you be seated. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. We are so delighted to have Brother and Sister Abner. I think missionaries to Belize. And their schedule just worked out where for them to be with us this morning. I said we will take them because I've noticed this over and over. When we put a focus on missions, God blesses this church over and over and over. This church loves missionaries. Do you believe that? Amen. And so we are delighted they are with us. We want them to be made right at home. You will notice a table out in the foyer with several different kinds of sauces. They are all habanero-based from the country of Belize. There's one with the word beware on it. I believe that's the Belize language that says Brandon Martin. It's got his name written all over it. And I'm sure that will support their endeavors. We are delighted to have them. Brother and Sister Abernathy, would you come? And take your liberty, share your burden, and preach to us today. Are you ready to receive the word of the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Sorry for a little drama here. Um, sometimes it, the presentation works, and sometimes it doesn't. And uh, we have had it lock a computer system up right in the middle of a service before. Just... They had to boot the system, and I said, well, I'm sorry, but y'all just have to look at me. 
So, um, but we got it figured out. Hopefully my computer's got enough charge on it to get us through. Um, thank you for having us this morning. We were here back in, I believe it was 2012, and it was 112 degrees. Air conditioner went out on the motorhome we were driving, and uh, that was exciting. So it's good to be back, good to visit you again. And uh, we do have Belizean hot sauces back there. They're made by a company called Marie Sharps. And Miss Marie's been in the business for a long time now. And um, she kind of started making pepper sauce by accident, is what she says. And uh, it's, she fa focused on flavor, not heat. So if you look at the left side of the table, that's mild. All the way to the right side is wild. <laughs> the one that says beware has a 5X warning. Now, it says keep out of reach of children and don't play tricks on the elderly and firm or infirm. Well, that said, my, our three and a half year old grandson, the Tasmanian devil, um, got into his daddy's bottle of beware one day and dumped it on his lunch. <laughs> We're from the South. His mama made him eat it. I said, hey, dude, how was your lunch? I didn't like it. Why not? It was hot. <laughs> well, it's what you get. But it's, it's, the flavors are very good. It's good stuff. You will enjoy it. If you, wanna, if you like hot sauce, see Linda after church, and she'll, uh, she'll set you up. Okay, so now the, hopefully the drama's over, and hopefully uh, everything's going to work. If you'll open that up, let's just, there you go. Just pick straight up. There. Do, do, do. Hopefully. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> You kind of, as missionaries, have backups for your backups. And sometimes when your backups don't work, and then you just panic. So uh, I told Linda a while back, we, we carry these toolboxes to put our hot sauces in. I said, we need to buy a third one just to put the projector in, just in case. It paid off today. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Belize, and then I'm going to challenge you this morning. Um, Belize is this beautiful hot little country that God called us to. It rains a lot. We got the Maya Mountains, this rainforest. Uh, it's hot. Did I tell you that? Uh, Y'all know what hot is here. Because uh, like, like I said, last time we were was 112, the last time we were here. But y'all don't have humidity. We are on the Caribbean Sea. So when it's 95 or 96 degrees and the humidity is at 89%, you pour sweat. You don't just sweat. You pour sweat. We've learned to go to church services. Of course, none of our buildings except for one have air conditioning. And it's not a church. It's a Bible school. So we've learned to take fans with us. And uh, they go get extension cords for us. And if we forget a fan, I'll say, can you all get me a fan? So they go to get us because it's hot. But we are so thankful God called us there. We didn't go to the mission field until I was 50. And then God sent us to Guatemala for two and a half years to finish training us for Belize. Now, I am going to set my timer. I'm not playing with my phone. I have a timer here that should have already been going so you all don't get late for lunch. So let's see if everything's going to work. There we go. This is Belize, just a small country about the size of New Jersey, population of about 380,000 people. Guatemala is to the west. Mexico to the north, and the beautiful Caribbean Sea to the east. Now, if you've never seen the Caribbean Sea, it's as crystal clear as this water. It's amazing. Uh, it can be 50 or 60 feet deep, and it looks just shallow because it's so clear. We have the second largest barrier reef in the world. Teams will come down to work, and we most of the time end up going snorkeling on the reef. And it is, it is amazing to go and see. We have about 200 islands off the coast. Some little, some big. Some of our Hollywood people that act like they're so environmentally green own islands out there. And they fly in on private jets and, and fly to their islands on private helicopters. But they're there, they have some islands out there. The little pyramid-looking things all around that, the, the nation are just that. They're Mayan ruins. If you ever come to visit us, I will take you to a place called Zunintunich on the Guatemalan border. I will watch you climb the pyramid. I did it once. Uh, I've had four back operations. I got screws and plates holding my spine together, and it hurts. But I climbed it, and I got to the top, and I was terrified. It's beautiful, but it's 141 feet. 
and you look into Guatemala to the left and the rest of it's Belize, it's beautiful. So I would take you and let you see it and you climb it. Next one. This is, Belize is not far away from Miami to the right, New Orleans in the middle, Houston to the left. It's about two hours and 15 or 20 minutes. You land at Philip Goldson Airport in Belize. This is our logo, the United Pentecostal Church International of Belize. And I'm very proud of this logo. I really like it. We had someone design it for us. And yes, it does have a toucan on it. That's our national bird. They're, they're fun to see fly by with their big, long beak. But you're always disappointed because they do not bring you any Fruit Loops. <laughs> we have six major cultures in Belize. The Mayan Indians are the indigenous people. The Mestizo are the Spanish-speaking. The Creole are a blend of the, uh, Cre of the Mestizo and the African cultures. The Garifuna is an African tribe. They were left there by ship captains. They took over ships. Uh, for whatever reason, they ended up there in Guatemala, Honduras, and Belize. They speak an African dialect. They speak English first. They still, their food is amazing. And they still have witchcraft. And they're, they're a large part of our population. Then we have the Chinese that came over in the 1850s to work in sugar cane. And they uh, now own almost all the hotels, hardware stores, and grocery stores, <laughs> sorry, in the nation. Um, there's not many things I miss when I'm on the field, but I miss a real grocery store. I miss Walmart. <laughs> You, you ask people where to go shop, and they say, go to the Chinaman, because the Chinaman owns all the grocery stores. And the Chinaman's cheap. He won't turn on lights during the day. I've had to pick my phone up and light up things so I could read the labels, because <laughs> lights cost money. Air conditioner, out of the question. Ceiling fans, probably not. Uh, they have been known to unplug their freezers at night to save money. So you have to watch shopping at the Chinaman stores. So sometimes I just want to go to a Walmart. We have the Mennonites that came in 1958. They bought 18,000 acres from one woman, and they hammered out this beautiful town in the, in the jungle called Spanish Lookout. Great place to go shopping. They're interesting. You'll pass buggies and horses, and then you'll pass them on four-wheelers flying down the road in pickup trucks. They have factories. So it's a blend of old order and new order. Then we have smaller groups, East Indians, Americans, Latin Americans, Canadians. We have several major languages. English is the official language. It's law. Er, official business is done in English. School is English. So you have Mayan children that in the villages speak all Quechi or Mopan. In school they learn English. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a mix and it's a blend. English is the primary because we were a British colony until 1981. Spanish would be the secondary language. Probably half our population speaks Spanish. Maya Quechi, most of our churches are Maya Quechi churches. There are times we do translate. Most of the time we don't need to. Maya Mopan, Mandarin, German, Garifuna, and Creole. Creole is not like a French Creole that you hear from New Orleans area. It's an English Creole. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples because this is the language that ties them all together. The man never got no money, so he me have a ton bush liar. Got that, right? That's English. The man never got no money, so he me have a ton bush liar. And we hear these kind of things every day. Sometimes you go, what? Try it again. Other times you go, okay. Here's what it says. Says the man never has any money, so he has to turn into a bush lawyer. A bush lawyer is a man that defends himself in court. So he's never got any money, so he had to defend himself in court. But that's an example of Creole that we hear daily. And everybody's going to speak Creole. They may not speak English, but they'll speak Creole. They, the Chinese will speak Creole. The, the Garifuna will speak Creole. The, the Mennonites. Because that's the language that ties them together. Here's another example. A billboard in Punta Gorda town. English, that's English. Yada fui, Belize. And that's the way they would say it. Yada fui, Belize. Yada fui, Belize. Yes, that's for we or for us, Belize. That's the language we hear 
daily. You hear it on the radio. You're riding down the road, and that's what you hear is Creole. The United Pentecostal Church International of Belize. I need to change that because we now have 41 churches. Our associate missionaries have started a new church uh, up north, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Our last report, we were at 6,250 constituents. From 2016 to 2019, we had 38% growth across the board, and we were thankful for that. This last term, over 2,200 received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Over 1,000 baptized in Jesus' name. Many, many healings throughout the country. We are just thankful that God lets us be a part. We started eight new churches this last term. And you say, well, only eight churches? Yes, but we had to rebuild infrastructure. Our infrastructure was crumbling. We didn't really have any unity. I had to swing a sledgehammer of unity. We will be the United Pentecostal Church. No more divisions. No more fighting. We're stopping this mess. We're going to get along and we're going to work for the kingdom. And that's what we did. Well, we did start eight new churches, but we rebuilt churches. This is the first one we did. It's in Laguna Village. It was falling apart. You could see daylight through the blocks and the floor was kind of wonky like this. A little earthquake had shaken it and it was bad. A pastor contacted me and said, you got any shovel-ready projects? Yes, I do. And he sent us a check, and this is what we built in Laguna Village. The young pastor there is doing an incredible job touching his village with the gospel. Thank you to a church in the U.S. Another church, a pastor contacted me, what do you got? And I said, well, we need to build a new building in Santa Ana Village. Our uh, district supervisor is very sharp, and he managed a trade with the village council for a church building we had that was too small that was right in front of their offices for about three acres down, just down the street. Now, it, there wasn't a building on it, but there was a big concrete slab, and there was really high-dollar outhouses there, and that's a big deal because that's the toilets. And so Diego made this trade, and a church said, what do you got? Well, we need to build in Santa Ana, and this is what we built was this building, one of our larger buildings, and it's a beautiful place that they are doing a great job touching their village. And we're thankful for churches in the U.S. that help us out. This is the inside. We don't have fancy pews. We don't have carpet. There is no air conditioner. They don't even have ceiling fans in theirs. It's hot. But they worship. And we're thankful for these great buildings. This is what we're building now. 24 by 40 uh, frame buildings. Pressure-treated pine, because we have lots of little creepy, crawly things that like to eat wood. And so we use pressure-treated pine. And we build these in just a few days. We'll have a slab ready. This is a team from Texas that's been down numerous times. And they put these things together in a couple of days. The Mayan men in the front helped them. Now, I want you to notice the third man in from the left. The, not the guy with the hat, the guy next to him. His name is Tim. Lives in the Austin area. Tim loves the work in Belize, and he loves giving to the work of God in general. He's built lots of churches here in the States. He's a contractor, but he's built many, many churches in Belize and paid for a lot of them himself. He brings teams down. And I'm telling you this for a reason. He sat in our living room before we came home for deputation, and he said, Brother Dwayne, you need to understand how much God is blessing me because I give. He said, for months now, we've been running $10,000 per day through our checking account. Add that up pretty quick. We just had lunch with him a few weeks ago in Texas, and he was on his way to California. He said, I gave these people a stupid high bid for a job. He said, it's incredible that what I gave them, just one little part's $300,000. And he said, and that's not even where I'm going to make money at. You know why? Because he said, I give faithfully to the kingdom of God. I work for the kingdom, and God blesses me. You will never ever, ever in 20 lifetimes, outgive God. He'll pour it back into you, just like the word says, heaped up and running over. That's what happens in Tim's life. This is a traditional building here, uh, 20, probably 18 or 20 feet wide, 30 feet long. Concrete floors and the posts that hold it up are just trees that they've skimped back. The wood is jungle lumber they cut with a chainsaw and a thatch roof. This is what we had for many years. Now, this blue beauty in the front, that's our She's for Christ truck. We're going to talk more about it in a minute, but thank you if you've ever given a penny to She's for Christ. A pastor from Wisconsin called, contacted me and said, you got any projects? Yes. Well, we want to build one. They sent money down. We poured a slab. He brought a team of men and women down. 
for about ten or eleven thousand dollars, we can build these buildings in the junk in the uh, villages. And he brought them down and said, "Ladies, if you're going, you're going to work." And they worked. Made me nervous. Took them a week to build their building. I was used to my Texas guys that were a couple of days, but they got it done. And when they left, we dedicated this beautiful building to the kingdom of God. Wired, lights, ready to go. We had a dedication service. Here recently they said there was five people baptized in Calpin Village. Thank God for churches in the U.S. Our services. When we first got to Belize, I saw things I didn't like. I didn't like some of the worship that I saw. I, it just it didn't feel right to me. So I said, we got to work on this. I knew I couldn't go in and bulldoze the culture because you hurt people, and I refused to do that. So I chose to infect them with the right things. First off, teaching about worship and praise from the Word of God. Teaching and teaching and teaching. Then we had music seminars. I brought people in that knew how to teach about worship and praise and proper ways to do things. And we chose to infect the musicians because they lead the services. Our people began to worship like this, raising their hands, lifting their voices, dancing the way Latin American people do. They began to worship and things began to change. This, come on, play, baby. Uh, it always plays <laughs> till I want it to. That is a video clip. Clint, why won't you dance there? But there we are. That big guy in the middle is a cowboy from Texas. He ranches 5,000 acres. He's six foot eight. He stands on the floor and he's taller than our pastors. The guy in the white shirt is our district supervisor. And now Frederico and I butt heads like two old goats. I promise we do. He aggravates fire out of me. He calls me now and I see his number, his name, and I go, oh, Lord, help me. And Linda laughs. But Frederico grabbed hold of a few things in the teaching and training. And one of them was worship. And you saw him dancing. He'll go down and he sets his pastors when we have conferences right over there. And he goes and gets them and pulls them out and says, get out here and worship. And he, he pushes them to worship. And it's changing his district. We have powerful conferences now in their district. We had a men's conference just before we left. And I've never felt such a sovereign move of God in Belize. It was incredible. And it was partially because of worship. Let me tell you a little about worship. I'm trying to hurry. My wife and I both got COVID last September at the end of the, the last week of September. And we were traveling from uh, Missouri to Louisiana. We left on Monday morning and we were sick. We didn't feel good. We got to the campgrounds where we parked that night. And uh, I, I, I'm an old truck driver, so I, I want to park straight. I pulled that trailer in crooked and, and dropped it and it sat there because I was sick. I didn't care. Wednesday, we saw a doctor and they sent us for a COVID test. Friday, they came back and said, you're both positive. Saturday, I got up and felt a little bit better. Linda said, I need to go to the hospital. I'm sick. I can't breathe. We went to the hospital. Her oxygen was 81, and it should be at least 95. They put her right in. And they kept her asleep over the weekend with just the big nose cannula on. They called me Monday morning at 10 after 7 and said, Mr. Abernathy, your wife's going to be in ICU on a ventilator within the hour. We're in Texarkana. We don't have family or friends there. I didn't know a soul there. She was in ICU for 27 days, on a ventilator for 23 days. I'd go in and just stand outside of her window and say, Linda, you got to breathe. Just breathe. She was asleep. She didn't know I was there. People praying all over. And uh, one Wednesday afternoon, I was there, and she's asleep. Seven bags of medicine. I counted them over and over, going into her at once. I look over, and she's going... But she wants something, and I realized she's worshiping. In her mind, she was worshiping. Early the next morning, she heard a voice say, it's time. And they took the ventilator out, and she breathed. They tried a few weeks earlier, and it could, didn't work. They had to put it back in. I'm telling you, worship wins battles. Are you struggling? Are you battling? Worship worship him he's paying attention to that stuff I promise our worship began to change our 
services. The Mayan women would stand with their heads down and their fists closed and they wouldn't open their mouth, tears running down their faces. Come on, sister, you got to open your mouth. If you want to receive the Holy Ghost, God needs to hear your praise. And when he hears your praise, he can use your mouth and fill you with the Holy Ghost. They began to do that and they began to receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Made a difference. Worship makes a difference. We don't have beautiful baptistries. We have three now. I take that back. We go to the river, and you pile them in a truck or a bus, you go to the river and baptize them. I was baptizing behind cow pen. They call it Copen Village one day. This is in Punta Gorda. We call it PG down in the south. Marcos Canti, the, the guy on the right, is our pastor there. there are the guy, other guy in the white shirt is Brother Diego Cock, our district supervisor. Marcos called me and said, Brother Duane, we're going to baptize 12 Sunday, can you come? Yeah. Call back Thursday. We're going to baptize 14. Are you still coming? Yes. We got there Sunday. We took them to the Caribbean Sea, and they baptized 16 people in Jesus' name. What a, what a great day that was. <clears throat> Brother Diego had them on the shore of the sea worshiping God. What a beautiful thing it is to see. This is our associate missionary, Brother Danny uh, Becerra, him and his wife Esther and their children are there now. They got there just before COVID hit and they locked Belize down tight like a prison. I promise they did. They, they couldn't have church. They still, if you're on the street now without a mask on, they will arrest you. And it's a $500 fine. <clears throat> Danny and Esther have negotiated it so well. He got there and said, Brother Dwayne, we don't have a baptistry. I'm going to build one. He raised the money, built a baptistry. This was one of his first people he baptized. Just a couple weeks ago, he baptized three more young ladies in Jesus' name. A number more he's baptized there. <clears throat> We've never had a church in the northern part of the country. And Brother Danny and our district supervisor started some Bible studies up there. And, they start, and it's a good couple-hour trip up there. But they go up there and they, they teach. He's baptized 12 or 13 there now. Their first service, they had 26 people in church. We just purchased a piece of property there. And, and then come fall, we're going to build a new church in Coruscant Town. First time ever for the United Pentecostal Church. This was Danny baptizing some of his people in the Caribbean Sea in Coruscant Town. <clears throat> Our Bible school. As you can tell, I'm not a young pup anymore. I'll be 63 in a few months. God didn't let me go to the mission field until I was 50 years old. And he sent us to Guatemala to finish my training for what I needed to do in Belize. And I realized I can't reach this country. I don't have 30 years to give. <clears throat> so I've got to train the locals. I took over our Bible school in 2017. We had only ever had 8 to 12 students somewhere in that neighborhood. When we got ready for our graduation, we only had nine graduation gowns, and I had to have a whole bunch made. Now we have 11 locations we teach and 14 teachers. We started 2018. Uh, I had worked really hard with the Mayans for two years, and we started with 65 students. In 2019, we had 98 students. We had a graduation of 63 people from our Bible school, probably more than they had had in the last seven or eight or nine years or 10 years. It was incredible. We had a party. We rented an outdoor venue and we had a meal catered. Our regional director came in and preached. It was incredible. We started 2020 with 120 students. Now, COVID decimated that, but we'll get them back because we've got to train them to reach their people. I can't, I don't speak Kichi, so I can't go deep in the jungle and deal with some of the people. I can deal with a lot of them because the younger ones probably 40 and above speak, or below, all speak English. But some don't. But if I can train them, they can go. This was, about, this was our mother church for years. We built a new building, and a church from Oklahoma, or a group from Oklahoma came in, and two days after we dedicated the new building and built a Bible school building there. And this is what the classes look like. Nice student chairs. There is no air conditioning. They do have ceiling fans. They might use them and they might not. The, it, the Mayans are funny. If it gets below 70, they're cold. <laughs> it's cold, Brother Dwayne. No, it's not cold. Yes, Brother Dwayne, it's cold. We know you like the cold, but we don't like the cold. Okay. So <laughs> it could be 95 in there, and they may not have the ceiling fan on. I want it on and some, some more. But they come and sit for three hours every Saturday and study. This is our graduating class in Stan Creek for 2019. And this is the district supervisor right in the front. He's the teacher. And 
I thought, well, he'll have no more students. But he got on his motorcycle, and he went village to village recruiting students. We built a brand-new Bible school building there and finished it just before we left, and Frederico decided he'd fill it up. He started the year with 35 students last year. And you'll notice the walls are different there. They're actually closed in, and they're insulated. It's the only building we have with real windows and insulation. And that beautiful white box on the wall is a 24,000 BTU air conditioner. This is also where we're going to have all of our executive board meetings. <laughs> all I got to do now is get the kitchen sink set up in there and my coffee pot, and we're good to go. But Frederico filled it up. It's a beautiful building. He had 35 students is what he started with and 15 in the department diploma level and I, we were so thrilled but you want to see the best thing about the building you ready there it is <laughs> a flush toilet you kids don't get it you ain't never been in an outhouse when it's 95 degrees I had a bat fly out of the hole one day at me I bailed you can have it baby I said brother Diego there's a bat in there he said oh yes he lives there brother Dwayne <laughs> Fred Duane never went in that one again. This thanks to the Indiana district for this work. Bible school students on the front porch of a house. Bible school students in one of our churches. This is our Toledo graduating class. They said, we want to sing, Brother Duane. I said, why? They said, because we want to sing. And I said, then sing. They sang praises to God for where he had brought them to. You know what? These are the people that will change their world. I asked, I asked God when he called me to Belize, I, I said, God, I'm happy to go, but I want the tithe of the nation. We have 380,000 people. I want 38,000 in the United Pentecostal Church. We're at 6,200, but these people will carry it to the next level. I may not live long enough if God tarries to see it happen, but they will. And they will change their world with this, this beautiful gospel that we preach. She's for Christ, and I'm hurrying along. We thank you for our She's for Christ vehicle. This is a 2014 Ford Ranger. It's not that pretty now. It's got well over 200,000 miles on it. It's worked hard, been rode hard and put up wet many, many days. I've hauled everything from people, motorcycles, building supplies. I don't know what else there. I've, I keep a bag of ratchet straps in the back to tie stuff down with because I'm always hauling something. It's got a 2.2 turbo diesel, six-speed automatic, and four-wheel drive. And nobody told it it wasn't a mountain goat. I've only had one place I couldn't get out of. I got down into a creek. Brother Dwayne, can you take Brother Ben home the back way? You can get to First and Second Creek. Well, I could get, First Creek was fine. Second Creek, I couldn't get out the other side. So I had to back back out. We banged it up a little bit here and there. And some of the paint's faded, but it's been a faithful servant. I've had people say, Brother Dwayne, why do we get to ride in your truck so much? I said, because this truck is a servant. We're here to serve. It works with us. It has to serve. Thank you for giving to She's for Christ. You see, we go to road, church on roads like this a lot of times. This road's nine miles long into the village. It takes an hour. During the rainy season, this part of the country gets 160 inches of rain a year. I know y'all can't fathom that. <laughs> the average is eight inches here. I looked it up. <laughs> eight inches is... Just a good day in Belize. <laughs> 160 inches of rain, but it's deep, lush, green rainforest. It's beautiful, but it's rough. It's rugged. Buses come in and out of there, come out of the village once a day and go back in in the evening. And they dig deep trenches and ruts. And if trucks go in there, they dig those. And you have to negotiate those. Our little truck has taken us in and out many times. Thank you. This was a, we had a group down from Tennessee and we, Back on the other side of that river was a youth extravaganza. The problem was that's not a river, that's the road. The river came up four feet during the night and uh, flooded the road. I, I paced the floor as long as I could. Brother Diego had called and said, Brother Dwayne, we're waiting. So said, Brother Diego, it's pretty deep. I can't get through yet. Buses wouldn't go through. Trucks wouldn't go through. I finally paced the floor and I told Linda, I said, I think I can make it. And she said, it's too deep, like a wife will do. Me, like a man will do. My truck's been through deeper rivers than that. I can make it. She says, it's too deep. So I waited. About 30 minutes, I said, I think I can make it. Brother Dwayne's pretty deep. Brother Dwayne. I said, James, load the truck. I'm going through. He loaded the back of the truck, put some people in the back seat, and somebody up front with me, and off we went. It was only maybe hip deep by then. I was good. 
I went over and dropped them off. There was a bus waiting, and I came back just smiling like a possum, just happy. Loaded six or seven loads up and took them across. We went and had church. We came back out. The water was down. The pastor there from the States said, you've got to have a vehicle with gravitas, don't you? I said, absolutely. I've got to have something with a strong spine because it's going to work hard if it's going to serve with us. And that little truck has. It's made our life much easier. A car wouldn't do. A little SUV wouldn't do. We only have 400 miles of paved roads in the whole country. We have 1,500 miles of unpaved roads. Thank you for giving to She's for Christ. It makes a huge difference in our lives. So, Belize. Hot, humid, rainy little country. Friendly people. Lots of different races, colors of people. Uh, one thing I love about Belize, they really don't care who you are. As long as you're happy, they're happy. They smile. They greet you. Manen, Manen, how are you? You walk by them in the evening. Good night. Good, it's, it's 5 o'clock, but it's good night. Good night. How are you? Good, good, good. They treat you kindly. They're happy. And I'm thankful God called us to Belize. We've seen things you'll never get to see. We've traveled in places, seen toucans, crocodiles swimming in the ocean, which is not very, doesn't happen very often. We've seen a coral reef that's it's gorgeous. We've been to tropical islands. Most of all, we've seen 2,200 people get the Holy Ghost. We've seen lives changed. We've seen churches come up. We built 14 buildings in four years, and I got tired of construction, but we're so thankful that God has taken us forward, and we've seen great revival, and it's not done. We're going to go back and completely sh just sharpen some things we've done and continue to train and teach people, and we're going to raise them up and make them stronger. We're thankful that God called us to be missionaries. Now, don't say I'm too old. I went to the field. I was 50 years old, just shy of 51 when we went. Don't tell me I got health problems. I do, too. 16 screws hold my spine together, plates and rods, and it hurts to stand, move, walk. doesn't matter. It hurts. And, and still struggling now with some effects of COVID. And, and it's like, don't, don't tell me you can't do something for the kingdom because you can. It doesn't matter what season of life you're in or what, what you do for a living. I was a truck driver. I just tell people I was a dumb old truck driver. And I love driving truck, but God took me out of a truck and said, I got another path for you to take. We're not super spiritual gurus. We're just people that said yes. God's looking for people to say yes. You see, Belize is our mission field. But what about yours? Population of 1.633 million in this metro area. What about your mission field? What about the drunk that you know? That person that's a drug addict, an adulterer, a liar, a cheater, a thief. What about the people who are just struggling with depression in life and struggling with life's issues? What about them? I've been in this thing all my life, and we've been mean to people and mistreated them. It's time to stop that nonsense. It's time to love them and show them what God can do in their lives, to show them he loves them more than we can ever love them, and that he can help change their lives and improve the quality of their life here, but not just here, but for eternity. It's time we get a burden for lost souls and begin to love them and reach out to them. Matthew 9, 36. Talking about Jesus here. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Jesus saw these people following him, and he was moved with compassion. It doesn't say he wept, but I'm guessing he probably did, because there was a depth of compassion that was moving him. That The writer saw it and wrote it down. It was moving him deeply. Why? Because they had nobody to lead them, nobody to guide them. Nobody was loving them and teaching them how to live right and how to live better. Jesus saw drunks. And he saw drug addicts, and he saw thieves, and he saw liars and cheaters. He saw all the things that society says are bad and evil, and he, he was moved with compassion. He loved them, and he, and he was moved. When's the last time we wept for a lost soul? When's the last time we were moved for a family member that won't live right? 
When's the last time that we just loved somebody instead of beating them up? We as apostolics have been bad about being judgmental and mean. We can't do that. We're in the last days. Jesus said you won't know the day or the hour, but you'll know the season. If we're not in the end time season, the harvest season, I'm an absolute idiot. Because look around us. Everything's pointing to a one world government. Everything's pointing toward America coming down and a one world government growing. Everything is changing around us. Jesus is going to come. Are we going to let them be lost and not be moved? Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Don't kid yourself. There's a harvest out there. You say, oh, they, they don't want what we got. Yeah, they do. They just don't know it. We need to love them. Show them what God's done for us. We need to lead them. Show them he can make your life better. We got a place in Tennessee where my son and his family live. That's six acres in the middle of a cornfield. There's 440 acres around us on three sides. It's beautiful to watch Underwood plant that. Mr. Underwood plants that corn that grows up. It's like this and then this and then it's head high. and It's field corn so it dries off in the field. And they use it for meal and for feed and for different things. And I can look at it and go, well, it's getting time. You better get that stuff down. But I don't know. But he knows. He knows the day that stuff's coming out of the field. And he lines up the trucks to come get his grain. He goes out to his combine and he checks the oil and fills it with fuel and kicks the tires and gets it ready to go. And he'll park it on the backside of that field. And you'll wake up one morning and hear a droning noise off in the distance. You may not see it, but he's out there somewhere. And he comes around that stand of trees and this big green monster taking down the corn. He could put that combine out there and it'll sit there a thousand years and just rot. It takes him getting up at four or five o'clock in the morning, eating his cereal and drinking his coffee, climbing up in that thing and starting it and going to work. The harvest will never come down without a man or a woman that will go to work. This ain't rocket science, folks. It's hard work. If we're going to win souls, we're going to work for the kingdom. Jesus said there wasn't enough laborers in the field. That's us. That's you and I. We, we don't have to be the smartest person on earth or some spiritual guru, but we can get a home Bible study and learn that thing and go sit and have coffee with them and teach them and love them and show them what God can do for them. There needs to be laborers in the field because people are hurting, people are wounded, people are lost, and we need to find them. This building, as beautiful as it is, will never win one soul. Just like the combine, it's a tool. It takes men and women to go out into the neighborhoods, to the highways and the hedges, and compel people to come and let them know the Holy Ghost will change their lives. Baptism in Jesus' name will change their lives. They can be satisfied, content, and happy in knowing God has done something in their lives. Jesus left us one prayer request. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. When's the last time you said, Lord, use me? Here I am. Send me. You know why God called us to go to Guatemala when in, in our middle ages? Because he knew we would say yes. Not that we were super spiritual or super special. We were just people that said yes. When's the last time you said, God, can you use me? Yes, I will go to my neighbor. Yes, I will go to my coworker. Yes, I will pray for them. Yes, I will study the word and prepare. Yes, I will love them to you. When's the last time you were moved and prayed for a lost soul? They're there. They're just waiting for you and I to come and find them. Pray, God, can you use me? We used to sing that old song, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. 
He can use you. I can never touch your world. I don't know your friends and your family, but you can. You can reach out to them. But you've got to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. I will go. He'll give you the words to say. He'll give you the wisdom. He'll show you what to do. You can reach them and love them all the way to him. My last scripture, my last picture is this. Jesus never said go make go in souls. Jesus said go make disciples. Go find a student. Go find somebody you can train. Go find somebody you can love and bring them all to way all the way to him. We need to wake up and know we are in the last days. He is going to come. There are thousands of thousands of people in this city that are waiting to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They, they may not know it yet, but they're waiting. And they're waiting for you to go and reach them. We're going to get back to Belize and go back to work. And we're going to find those people. We're going to disciple people. We're going to train people. But this is your mission field. And I challenge you to get into the field and go to work. An old song that I have my guys sing a lot when we're in, in conferences is I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. The problem many times with us as Americans, we say we will, but we won't. We like our stuff. We like our, like Jesus told the one guy, you got a feathered nest, you liked your comfortable cave and your feathered nest. We're comfortable where we're at and we don't want to reach out. We're afraid. It's time to not be afraid anymore. It's time to go into the harvest and win souls and make disciples. It's time. Pastor, God bless you. I'm, I'm finished. Lord bless you today. Would you stand to your feet with me today? We have heard the burden for Belize. We've heard the passion for Belize. So appreciate all that they have done. And thank God for what he has done there. And it just jumps out at me that if we will step into the harvest field, put whatever talent and ability we have, or lack of ability that we may have, into the hands of God. Suddenly it turns into like that little boy's lunch that wasn't enough to feed a couple of people, much less a multitude. But when Jesus puts his hands on it, he blesses it, and then he breaks it. If you're going to be used, you're going to be broken a little bit. But after he blesses it, and after he breaks it, it's not fun, but then he multiplies it. Then you look back and say, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that breaking point for anything in the whole wide world. God's talking to individuals in this church right now. We don't have to pray, God, would you talk to us? He's talking to us. We need to start praying, God, help us to hear. I was just in conversation with Sister Aubrey Staten a few weeks back, going on an associates or associates and mission trip to Bangladesh. She was at a conference of brand new missionaries. And there were, we would call them hyphen, that 20 to 25 year old age group. There were young ladies there that felt the call of God on their life to go to what they term access restricted nations. In other words, they are hostile to the gospel and to the American lifestyle. They cannot name the countries for the danger that it may pose. You're looking at countries that are heavily Muslim-influenced. And 23-year-old young ladies, multiple of them, telling their mom and their dad, I feel like God's calling me to an access-restricted nation. I'll worry about marriage when I get back home. You know what that tells me? It lets me know God really is speaking to this generation. Maybe we're just not listening. 
And I think the word of the Lord has came in and talked to us today. What God has done in Belize is his desire to do right here in Phoenix, Arizona. I wonder if we could come and stand in these altars for just a few moments and just talk to the Lord for a little bit. I want us to begin by thanking God for what he's done in Belize all over this house right now. Would you lift your hands towards heaven and begin to thank the Lord for what he's done in Belize right now. Jesus, I love you and I bless you. While you come to these altars, I want to let you know that if you have a need in your life today, God wants to minister to that need right now. You can come and begin talking to the Lord right now. Let's just join together and thank God for what he has done in Belize right now. Jesus, I love you. I thank you for the great work that you've done in Belize. Uh, I give you glory and honor and praise. Uh, God, you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly, and I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Uh, I bless you and I praise your holy name, Savior. Uh, thank you for the hand of God that have been upon the Abernathies. I pray the blessings of God be upon them. Uh, I pray you would bless their travels and bless their health, God. Uh, provide their every need. God, give them strength for the field that you have called them to. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Uh, we thank you. Uh, now that we've given him praise for what he's done in Belize, uh, I want us to take a moment and surrender our lives to him. Uh, I want you to consider your life like that little boy's lunch placed in the hands of Jesus. Uh, surrender and say, God, I take all the holds off of you. Uh, I surrender everything to you. Uh, I want your blessing on my life. I want your breaking on my life uh, so that you can multiply it. Uh, would you reach out and talk to God right now just in total surrender in the name of Jesus. Uh,